All right. Uh, so thank you all for joining today. Uh, just a couple of information um, that, yes, this will be recorded on our um, and placed on our YouTube channel uh, and LinkedIn, which I would be sending out the links on, on the chat. And if you are following us already on LinkedIn, then you will directly find it um, there after we have completed. So you guys are all on mute. Um, once we open up for questions and answers a Q&A session, we're happy to either, you know, speak to us directly. I have here joined with me Jordan today. I'll let you uh, give you the mic in a couple of minutes, Jordan. Um, and yes, please give us your questions during the session and we can directly tackle them after we are done. Um, as I said, so I hope that you guys have been following the tackling SAP security together. Um, so every month, um, and of course, with what we usually hear from you guys and what we see important from our different partners, our different customers, uh, we try to address important topics um, around SAP security. And also in most cases, uh, we do it together with a, a, a security or an SAP security hero, as I'd like to call them. So, uh, to get definitely further insights on uh, what is happening or what kind of topics we are presenting. Um, and of course, this month, I'm happy to uh, be joined with Jordan, the founder of Vice, uh, <coughs> Visker, um, where he will, he and I will address and tackle an important and exciting subject for, for both of us, which is the journey uh, to attack and defend system, uh, defend SAP uh, um, systems. So without without going into the topics at the moment, I'm just going to uh, uh, give the stage to Jordan to tell us more about himself and more about Fisker. Jordan. Okay, perfect. Well, first of all, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Jordan Sandarsiri. I am the founder of Bixer which is a company that specializes in SAP security. We do uh, SAP penetration testing, uh, we do audits, we do architecture review, monitoring, and as Rasting was saying before, we also have an extensive read of partners. With each one of the partners, we do different activities, and we have partnered with No Monkey to uh, bring and showcase the famous SAP cybersecurity training that we normally hold. Um, and alas, that's why we are here. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us, Jordan. And I know that, um, you know, attacking and defending um, SAP security systems might uh, um, be uh, not very straightforward sometimes, but we are coming uh, uh, me and myself, uh, myself and Jordan are coming from the cybersecurity area, uh, directly diving into SAP security. Um, and this will bring us directly to the journey that we want to take you through. So um, the journey of how uh, Jordan and myself have moved um, or worked towards SAP security. So the journey, uh, most of the difficulties that uh, uh, we have seen, and then we're going to discuss how you um, yourself can start with this journey, you know, where to start when you are looking at SAP. Maybe you don't need to get a deep dive. Maybe you want to just understand, you know, important topics uh, for monitoring, for um, um, detection, or even creating attack simulation in order to enhance your uh, strategy or your cybersecurity strategy and infosec. Um, then we look at a brief summary about the attacking and defending, which brings me to an interesting point after the agenda where Jordan, I'm going to give it to you to discuss a little bit of what you are doing for the No Monkey Academy. And then we'll just look at some of the, uh, you know, open source tools that are available there that we usually use, uh, any final thoughts that we have, and then we're going to open it up for you guys to ask us anything. So we're hoping that we will be done within uh, our session for half an hour, and then we would like to, you know, um, have you guys um, um, involved in uh, the discussion as well. Um, so, as I said before, I get into it. Um, Jordan is one of uh, our great authors within the No Monkey Academy, uh, and he has recently actually finished authoring uh, the fundamentals of attacking and defending SAP systems. 
So we are today giving a small summary, I presume. So Jordan, would you like to give us um, what would people expect in this course? Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, you will see that it will correlate with what we have today for this session. Um, we normally teach this training. Uh, it has actually two different flavors, if you want to call it like that. Mm -hmm. We have a two-day offering and we have a three-day offering. All right. Something that both have in common, and again, we're going to make a lot of focus here today, uh, uh, is that we start from scratch. We start from where, by the fundamentals of SAP, the architecture, the name of the components, how those components correlate with each other. Uh, it might be a little bit boring for the basis team or for the SAP administrators that they have a lot of years of experience, but the unit number one is of almost importance because put people at the same level. Uh, there is no secret that SAP is a giant. So believe me, you have no chance to understand later on what is the most complex functioning on SAP systems if you don't know the fundamentals, if you do not know the base. Same as an attacker, uh, there is no chance that you are going to be able to perform such uh, um, advanced exploitation techniques on the different SAP components if you don't know the basics and how to they interconnect to each other. We fully cover Ava, Jamstax, and we go through HANA as well, all the support the databases, operating systems. We see a lot of the web part. We make focus on the exploitation of the ICM, the Java HTTP, and we have incorporated the cloud as well. We right. cover the most popular SAP components. Just to the idea of the training is to give you a round overview of the entire SAP ecosystem. Awesome. The main difference with the three-day training is that on the three-day training we also teach you forensics. Well, the, that's a lot of subject, and I think it answers uh, uh, the first question: Does it only cover ABAP systems? And you have rightly, uh, uh, you know answered that it gives an overview of the <laughs> entire uh, components there. Um, and then you said the third day you uh, go through forensics when it comes to investigating exactly. certain things, which is interesting. Exactly. So um, as I said, uh, this you can find on, on the Academy of No Monkey. Um, I have sent you the link there if you want to directly go and register. Um, so. Uh, then you will have uh, Jordan for either two or three days, depending on the registration. And when it comes to the advisory part of No Monkey, we do an enablement, uh, as Jordan said, um, we do an enablement uh, towards those areas when we want to um, enable SOC analysts or the SOC team, you know, to enhance what their detection is, their monitoring capabilities, and definitely keep keep it simple at, at, at start and then trying to, you know, hit those difficult points that we will see now during this session and see how we do it from the start. And this is what me and Jordan are going to um, walk through this uh, session. Uh, so without further ado, um, so a journey towards SAP security, um, how uh, you go from a zero to an SAP security hero. Now, SAP security hero requires a lot and a lot of time, you know, from coming from ABAP to NetWeaver to all of these different technologies. I sometimes, uh, you know, get lost the minute that um, I saw ABAP or a minute I saw SAP. This is the first thing I saw. I said, what the hell am I getting into? You know, I'm, I'm leaving. That's it. Uh, going back to the old cybersecurity um, uh, concepts and topics. So I'd like to know from your side, why did you choose to move to SAP security? And, you know, how did you start doing that? Okay, perfect. Uh, oh boy, it was like many, many moons ago, uh, more or less back in 2008, when I was younger, I had more hair and less fat. Uh, no, jokes aside, um, I was a general pen tester. I was dedicating myself 100% to cybersecurity, you know, attacking the typical uh, Apache web servers, uh, pen testing, local networks, exploiting Windows machines, etc. And then the opportunity to start looking at SAP came up. Um, 
at the beginning it was uh, challenging and exciting at the same time. Again, remember it's 2008. We didn't have any <laughs> available resources uh, that we have nowadays in terms of SAP Cyber Security. Uh -huh. uh, the documentation was quite scarce. F forget it about finding something like on YouTube or something like that. Um, the very little documentation that we could find, it was limited of the regular functioning of the SAP systems, or it was directly 100% in German. And unfortunately, I do not speak German. Um, and I believe it or not, I really like it because it was a challenge. It was like a green field uh, that whenever I wanted to do, I had to research. Um, I had no other choice than become myself, to train myself to be an SAP basis and understanding, again, and that's why I was insisting before, understanding the fundamentals, yeah. that was key. Because believe me, you won't be able to advance with the same speed uh, if, if, if you skip the first class, you won't be able to advance with the same speed and the results will be quite limited in comparison to what you can achieve once you know why SAP works in the way it does. Um, I needed to train myself. I started to scrap uh, whatever uh, tutorials or manuals I could find, the famous ABM 940 and everything that I could find related to that. Uh, I found it, that it was uh, quite limited, actually. The, the access to the information it was quite limited. And at some point, it was like, OK, so I learned as much as I could from the documentation or whatever is available without a paywall. I, I, I opened the, that big parenthesis. And uh, there is no other way for me to start learning about this than starting to experiment. I installed the famous, uh, for, for the oldies here, the famous or infamous, <laughs> depending on how you want to call it, NSP uh, instance. And I started to, to practice. I started to analyze the traffic, understand the protocols. One thing came to another. And before I realized it, I was reporting big vulnerabilities that was impacting SAP in, uh, in a lot of ways. For example, I was the first one to discover that the management console was completely unprotected at the beginning. It, it was like literally you send one package and the SAP will uh, restart itself. Of course, one package without authentication, by the way. Um, that led to a lot of changes in the structure of SAP, in the structure of how you would deploy software because SAP was relying on that information. So yeah, at that point, it was kind of like a waterfall effect that took me where I am nowadays. Nice. Well, the story of mine is I, I came actually, um, I was uh, um, leading a SOC and I had no complete visibility about it. And the minute that, you know, um, I started under or, or hearing words that uh, Sepanese people like to shout out, they're actually not words, they're acronyms. They like to do a lot of acronyms when I got into SAP world. So um, for me, that was just insane. <laughs> but it's similar where, where, you know, there were a lot of um, 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 as you said, uh, information, but in German, you know, the system is made by Germans for the entire world in German, which was nice. And then, you know, there were other um, uh, providers or then the white papers. We will look into these, uh, definitely have an idea of where now it is a bit more easier to find, a bit more easier to find certain areas in regards to SAP security. So before I want to jump in um, even more into the areas of how you know we started this or how you started this and on, on, on what recommendations that we want to give out there, um, how do you want to start from which areas you want to uh, begin? Um, I would like to discuss one thing that I've seen, um, or let's say two things. One thing I'd like to discuss is a myth. Now I'd call it a myth, but I don't know from your side, so that I wanted to see what you think. So the myth behind SAP systems being isolated. You know, we I usually hear this on and on from potential customers uh, to some SAP application owners that their SAP system is isolated and not exposed for them to consider any risk. 
So secure, securing it is not actually their top priority. Now, is this a myth like I imagine in your opinion, or do you believe that this is the truth? Yes, SAP systems are isolated. You don't need to care about it anymore. Uh, well, uh, yeah, definitely a myth. I mean, we live in an era where or toaster or, or dishwasher is connected to the internet. Uh, it, it, is it is safe to assume that some in some way or another, SAP is going to be internet uh, facing at some point. It could be either be directly, uh, you could be exposing it through a Citrix environment, or even indirectly through an interface or a custom application. But definitely, SAP uh, it is interconnected. It is a, a type of system that has been designed to be interconnected and. Most people don't know it, but it has been capable of connecting to the internet since 1996 with the introduction of the ITS. So definitely, and this is an advice that we always give to people, like if your recipe system is not supposed to be connected to the internet, well, you might as well verify that that is actually the case. And uh, we recommend the utilization of Shodan. Uh, we use also the Chinese equivalent to Shodan. Um, I think it's called Suman or something like that. Um, but yeah, definitely something that you need to verify 100%. And again, pay attention to what I said before. Maybe it's not directly connected, but 100%. maybe the information is still accessible through an interface because it's a very common scenario. And well, this depends on the organization, but in general, interfaces are not fully documented or completely documented. So it's very common that you will miss a few bits of pieces here and there. So definitely my advice is to double check. 100%. So I should have actually put a big banner on this one and say it's a myth. So SAP systems are just isolated in certain people's heads. <laughs> There's a lot of ways to get into the SAP system, um, as you said, uh, through you know obvious ways. And then you have those for instance, APIs that are connected, you know, uh, clients that are connected to the system itself. One other thing that has always been uh, very interesting to me, um, you know, coming from uh, cybersecurity, you have a lot of, specifically when I'm talking about SOC, you have, you know, your threat intel team, you have your uh, threat research team, same thing. Um, sometimes you have your blue team, your red team, all of them trying to gather information to enhance this protection. Now, when I came into the SAP world, I noticed that many organizations understand an SAP security professional is one who is only experienced in, you know, SODs, authorization, GRC, and an SAP basis role, uh, you know, even though uh, there's a limited to no security background, is responsible for anything else when it comes to SAP security, in most cases. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, this sure takes me back. <laughs> when we started with this, and uh, we started to actually tackle the problem of the SAP security uh, 15, around 15 years ago, uh, whoever you will speak to, and uh, you will do the question of, hey, what you guys are doing in terms of SAP security, people will immediately start talking about segregation of duties, uh, you know, roles, profiles. Um, Please don't get me wrong, uh, SOD is very important, Absolutely. but you need to start taking a look at the cybersecurity vulnerabilities. When we do the training and we, we explain this in a, on a very graphical way, uh, we split the SAP system on different layers. At the bottom, you will have the database, then the operating system, then what they used to be called uh, the SAP NetWeaver framework, and then the, the functionality or the, the applications or the business logics, depending how you want to call it. The SOD, the application of the SOD, it will be at the very top uh, of, of this uh, segmentation in SAP. Right below that, you will have the X NetWeaver, for, for the sake of simplicity, let's call it like the X NetWeaver framework. And there is where you need to pay, I don't want to say most of the attention, but at the very least, tons of attention. 
because it, it is the framework itself who regulates the fundamentals of how SAP will connect with the operating system, how SAP will connect with the database, and how SAP will operate the internals. If someone attacks the NetWeaver framework, uh, the X NetWeaver framework, and is able to ex exploit that part of the functionality, it will automatically gain access to all the different layers. Again, it's not one thing or another, it's a complement that you need to start thinking about. 100%. And this is where, you know, you bring all of these important people in one room and try to understand those different areas. So now that we have completely, you know, um, I like to start with these two areas, especially when I'm talking also to customers to have that, to have them understand that it's not all about authorization. Yes, it's a big part. SODs, it's also a big part, but also you have other parts of SAP system that we need to take care of. Um, now these concepts, um, so taking that out, let's see how we can um, actually um, uh, get started. Now these concepts you see here, um, let's say, or methods are not actually new. Uh, personally, um, I, I've seen them on a regular basis in SOC teams, red teams, blue teams, you know, uh, whichever color team you like to call your team. Um, and really helped me personally uh, on how to grasp some of the areas of SAP. You know, I say some because the minute that I go into one uh, area, I find there is 900,000 other areas. But let's say some areas that helped me with SAP. Um, and of course, gave me a very good basic starting point. And this is, I think, you've been uh, uh, telling me about it since the beginning. So from your perspective here, um, do you see anything you would add, um, recommend, advise, uh, you know, cybersecurity guys or infosec professionals on, you know, this list on, and then how to start with this SAP security? So other than, you know, you understand your main components, understand how data flows, your communication methods, uh, what traffic to be expected, um, you know, not your regular highway traffic, but actual traffic between the, the different uh, SAP components. What are those that are being logged? What is not being logged? And one important area for me was, you know, the, the uh, aligning those different areas of SAP into familiar standards I, I, I saw, which is the NIST, the ISO. And do you see in your opinion, I think I, I, I questioned or I answered, or I gave you the question and I just ran all over the place. <laughs> So would you add <laughs> to this list or advise uh, um, our um, you know, attendees? Uh, yes, in a few words, uh, be patient. Uh, SAP is a giant. <laughs> yeah. uh, it has tons of functionality, uh, tons of software. And to complicate things a little bit more, they are constantly rebranding some of the products for marketing reasons. So at the very beginning, it could be a little bit challenging and intimidating. Uh, the best advice that I can give you there is as any time that you have to face with a big or complex problem, split it in a small chunks and try to start tackling small tasks. Step zero, yes, okay. Let's see what the SAP is, uh, what are the fundamentals, uh, how I connect to it, what is happening underneath. And then you slowly start moving forward to start consuming the more complex topics. But don't try to bite every single new uh, piece of software that the SAP brings. I uh, don't start, don't try to bite 100% of the on-prem versus the cloud. No, it's start slowly and in small pieces and you will see that your learning curve will be much more so. 100%. And uh, to also um, give the audience, you know, the concepts, you don't need to reinvent the wheel, you know. Um, I'm going to be a bit biased here. Um, so we have the you no know, monkey security metrics that actually combines the NIST cybersecurity framework um, areas, main areas, which is from identify to recover, and then, you know, integrate them with the four areas of what we see in SAP, you know, the integration platform, the access, the customization. Now this you will find throughout uh, uh, No Monkey and some of the projects we do open source um, in terms of the academy, you know, the different uh, courses and also in how we are um, helping customers from the No Monkey advisories. 
So one thing that actually helped is sitting down, you know, with the, the framework that I already know, which is the NIST, and putting uh, together with the team uh, this integration between uh, the SAP and the cybersecurity framework. All right. So now that we have, you know, understood, I did have some some sources, learning sources that I came across, uh, which were, you know, for me were great. Uh, some, as I said, were are um, are, are biased to <laughs> no monkey, but um, from these learning sources, um, um, Jordan, has any <laughs> is, does anything come out, or do would you add anything to these lists so they can uh, further enhance on what to look at when it comes to SAP security? Uh, um, yeah, sure, I can comment on it. Um, I would like to split this in two different profiles uh, All right. because depending on who you are, it changes, right? Uh, from one side, you have the person that knows about security but wants to start learning about SAP. And from the other side, you have the guys or girls uh, that already have experience with SAP. If you already have experience, I, I don't know about uh, what you have ex experience here, but I really like uh, that uh, OpenSAP is pushing all the different capabilities and even showcasing new developments. Um, the SAP community as well, the OWASP projects, the SAP white papers, and nowadays there are even more actors that are releasing uh, papers. Some of them are more like marketing materials, some others try to publish like technical information, so you might as well do su subscribe their blogs, etc. I think the ones that have it harder are the ones that they do not know SAP at the beginning. That yeah. the, the ones that they do have the background of security and they say, okay, how do I start with this? Uh, how even the most basic thing, where do I practice? Uh, it's a bit challenging for sure, uh, or no monkey training again, we start from the very beginning. Uh, and I'm being very honest, maybe if you guys know different, let me know, but there are not many resources uh, towards the newbie. Uh, most people will just assume that you know SAP. Try to see some YouTube videos and lean back on the community, um, especially the SAP cybersecurity community. We're not that big in terms of uh, the, the, the people that we represent the community and in general we are quite open and quite friendly uh, to tackle your questions so don't be shy and uh, I have seen some discord channels uh, for talking freely and I have seen some foreign seen on the SAP community as well so uh, everyone was a newbie once so don't be afraid to just ask, hey guys, can you orientate me on where should I start? How I can get a trial environment? And what would you recommend me to do as a first step? Don't Absolutely. be afraid. And you being one of you know, um, uh, our, uh, the authors within No Monkey Academy, I can see also, you know, we do have uh, authors when it comes to the No Monkey Academy coming from the cybersecurity side giving those basics, as you said, uh, towards SAP security. You know, there, there is a platform mm -hmm. you can train on within the No Monkey Academy, uh, depending on those courses. And then there are way advanced courses. You can create, you know, your paths towards becoming, let's say, um, that SAP security hero or a version of a hero you want to become. So there are a couple of resources, as you said, that are very, um, um, helpful community, community, um, not in specifically what the SAP community uh, in terms of uh, the the um, uh, website community.sap.com, but the SAP security community are uh, quite approachable, as you said. So this is, I think we are. Uh, I need to run through this. Well, we'll try to run through this, but this is our uh, let's say core of what we want to discuss now. Um, a lot of those professionals out there, um, specifically when it comes to, you know, the, the audit part or infosec part, you know, they like lists, checklists or step-by-step -step approach, you know, is there an actual step-by-step -step approach to, to, you know, protecting SAP? Now I, I accumulated a list, you know, we need to understand the different strategy and this is coming from, you know, coming out, coming into SAP security, go to cybersecurity, you know, we understand the defense strategy, what is happening 
you know, your detection and monitoring capabilities, you always need to go back and doubt yourself because it's probably not working. Of course. You know, build your attack strategy in terms of um, uh, your simulations and then uh, um, gather the red and blue team. Now, most organizations do not have that kind of team together. So you, you do tune, filter, improve, repeat. But is this actually, you know, sufficient? You know, these four areas are quite easy to speak about, but quite hard when it comes to the context of SAP security. Um, and I've seen that. Um, so a way towards that, um, and to summarize, you know, what, what are the things that you have been see, uh, saying, you know, understand this network, network SAP, uh, SAP network architecture. You know, I like to always go back to threat modeling. Uh, um, when it comes to threat modeling, taking this big picture, as you see here, that I wanted to get out to bringing it into normal, you know, layman terms where, oh, I see this. This is the usual network um, uh, area. And when I want to even dig deeper into, you know, I go back to my application pen testing days where I look at it as, okay, three tiers. You know, I'm evaluating a host you know, the hosting application, the OS, what it is, you know, evaluating the application server, um, and then what do systems and users authenticate and the client access. Now, when it comes to SAP, I do agree that it is a bit more into what this picture I'm, I'm trying to present here, but I'm trying to come back to the things that you said is that um, start simple and grow on that simplicity. So from the areas, you know, these areas of understanding, you know, your attack vectors, ports, um, what do you recommend right now um, to add on this list or even to remove and, and put something that is better um, to enhance towards this list? Yeah, no. Um, if you're doing a, a pin test, uh, if you want my advice, of course, I, I, to me, it's, Play an artisanal jobs. Everyone has its methodology. I like to base myself on the PTES methodology made by OWAS, and I add some of my own and the secret sauce, if you want to call it like that. But uh, if you want to advise, the very first thing that you do, for at least from the red team point of view, don't disregard the discovery. Don't uh, blaze through the discovery. You want to know from the attacker perspective uh, and from the blue team as well. You want to know exactly what it is in front of you. What application servers does it have? What versions does it have? What services is exposing everything from the red teamer? Because you all everything that you discover, you will try to exploit. And from the blue teamer, make yourself the question: How you are going to protect something that you don't even know that exists? Absolutely. So for any of the teams, uh, and even if you're like a purple team, uh, do not disregard the discovery. That is the, the fundamental part for the rest. If you fail on the discovery, everything that you build later on, we, it might not be as efficient. 100%. And I do agree that, that you know, uh, the basics, when you just take the basics um, and build through that, um, which brings me to an... Um, interesting question i always get uh when when i am in during SOC in, or before i start a SOC enablement for a certain organization is that um does a SOC analyst i'm going to take a SOC analyst does uh, or do they need to know in-depth um uh, knowledge towards sap um of course the basics, yes, but towards SAP to, in order to actually detect, um, investigate, or um, uh, try to um, um, address a certain alert or an event. OK. Uh, I would say that the right point will be, uh, uh, this is my opinion, I would yeah. say that the right point will be in the middle. You cannot truly expert the SOC team to be experts on pretty much everything, but I'm sorry to say that if we just the basics, you won't be able to detect the, the attacks in SAP. So literally the, the, the golden point will be at the middle. You do need to know the basics. You do need to know how at least the very uh, or most utilized components in SAP works 
because in base of that, you need to interpret the results that you are going to get. Everyone can create a parser that will extract the information from the SAP system and send it to a scene. But there is no magic regarding that. Uh -huh. But the trick comes of, oh, okay, so I, I see that someone is invoking the SAP XPG. What does it mean? <laughs> it means the SAP XPG for someone that is not part of the SAP system might as well be something that you're going to eat uh, tomorrow during your breakfast. Or it could be an arbitrary binary that you don't know what you're doing there, or it's a common execution. So my opinion is that you need to be a little bit further. It's not the answer that anyone wants to hear, if, if I'm being honest, because that, no. that needs more work and more study. But I'm sorry to say it, otherwise uh, you won't be able to catch it. Yeah, four or five years ago, I wouldn't want to hear the same answer as well. <laughs> Exactly. And I do understand that. I mean, you're a SOC analyst, you're already dealing with a Cilium uh, products, but you do need to understand that it's very likely that SAP will be your most important system inside the organization. 100%. It's very likely that it will hold uh, the money. That is where the attackers are, are trying to get. So yeah. there is no way around that. That's that's why I left my old company and joined the guys at No Monkey. So <laughs> you were... Follow the money <laughs> of SAP. No, so um, a small, just a couple more, uh, if you bear with us. Um, I did put a list of tools that, you know, I see that are very helpful when, you know, you are mm -hmm. in that area, you know, when you're doing some pen testing, even not just pen testing, but, um, you know, trying to simulate attacks against your environment to determine where you're, or you're to determine your detection uh, capabilities, your monitoring capabilities. Um, of course, there are more tools that Jordan, I know, because you have told me that you like to um, uh, create your own tools. Can you give us just a small uh, recap of that? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit snob in that sense. Uh, I, everything that I do and I utilize for the pen test, I have built my own, just because I want to be 100% sure of how the utility is connecting to the SAP system, what is sending, and what is the response that is coming from SAP. But if you are starting, or even if you have SAP experience and, are, and you're not that familiar with this kind of tools, uh, for sure, I will recommend the uh, PSAP uh, for at least to give you an overview of how you're going to connect with Python to the SAP systems. Martin Lasho, the owner, has made a, an amazing job. Uh, if you are more like a PowerShell uh, expert, uh, go for Power SAP. Uh, Shofri has do uh, again a very good job adapting that. And the, the, the dissectors, if you want to understand how the, the traffic towards the SAP system is going, John the Reaper, a must have and a huge value to the community when you want to measure the strength of the hash passwords on all the different algorithms that SAP supports. And I want to give you a final shout for uh, someone that uh, doesn't get much recognition. It was the first Aldi Pierce Sharding who did the first non-official um, Python connector to SAP. You was oh. talking about many months ago. So uh, I really appreciate what all those guys have done for the community. Awesome. Well. Um... I do have uh, well, uh, a question for uh, um, before I jump into the final thoughts. Um, and I would like to also answer Dimitri's question through a poll, because this is a question that I wanted to put to see what you guys think is, is the biggest challenge in SAP security you guys see and face. Um, so I'm launching the poll right now. You should be able to see it in front of your uh, screens. And I will wait for a couple of, uh, or for a minute to get uh, uh, some, and then we can review it all together. We'll jump to the final thoughts. All right. So a couple more people just so they could, we could get an idea of, ah, nice. So SOD controls is not a problem. <laughs> All right, uh, 30 more seconds. Oh. 
All right. So I um, think I should share the results. Please let me know if you guys can see the results. So, you know, it's a close call when it comes to lack of training resources, you know, the knowledge skill towards SAP security, monitoring, optimizing SAP. So the point that SAP security professionals are not only in regards to SOD controls proves a lot uh, on what we have discussed, you know. Um, it's definitely so, Dimitri, I hope I gave you live answers to your question and everybody has uh, seen what kind of um, challenges. Also, we see these challenges all across our different customers. When we speak to partners, when we speak to you know, the SAP security community, we have the same answers over and over again. Um, some final thoughts. Um, to, to wrap it up, you know, keep it simple. As you said, uh, uh, Jordan, you know, keep it simple. Um, we'd like to or understand the network architecture, SAP network architecture. Um, mm -hmm. A point that I am uh, I enjoy, you know, threat model and then threat model some more and then actually do it more. You know, don't stop, just keep on threat modeling because threat modeling brings those important people like a business uh, uh, owner or an application owner together on a table and puts them uh, to determine what kind of security requirements, what kind of stuff that you know uh, is happening, what is not happening, um, and then deep in uh, 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 go in towards your SAP components, uh, your proprietary protocols offered by SAP components. What do they offer in terms of you know uh, the logging? Um, understand how the traffic flows, and definitely look into uh, those attack vectors. Um, as I said before, that Jordan has created a, a magnificent um, course, which is the fundamentals of attacking and defending SAP systems. So that's something that I recommend you guys register for. Any final thoughts, Gordon, before we open the floor for questions? No, I, this was like a very, very quick overview of everything that we do from the blue team perspective and for um, the red team perspective. Of course, SAP is super diverse, quite complex, and it wouldn't be possible to uh, specifically take each one of the elements on a 40 minutes talk. But again, we just wanted to give you guys an overview and to keep it as interactive as possible. Well, thank you, uh, Jordan, for joining us. Um, and should we open up the floor for some questions for myself, for Jordan, please. So I hope Dimitri, we answered both of your questions during these uh, during the uh, uh, discussion. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So does it cover only ABAP systems? Yes, it covers um, mostly uh, Jordan. As Jordan said, it covers more than ABAP systems. The cloud, uh, uh, NetWeaver. Uh, what are else, uh, Jordan? Have you Java. in term for a security monitoring? So there are areas, um, other courses that are available for security monitoring. Uh, you know, detection capabilities and that. Um, this is just, yes, of course. Yes, and also on the three-day offering, when we talk about forensics, the process that you do uh, to apply the forensics to SAP is very similar to the process that you take to bring the logs from SAP, parse them, and introduce them into the scene, because we use the, the power of the scene and the power of the elastic search for the forensics. So, uh, Team Brothers, and you will learn it as well. Yeah. All right. And once we get the access to ABAP initializer, what else can we do other than a reverse shell? Would you like to take that, um, Jordan? What is what we do? Oh, it's a very important uh, question that you do there. By default, us as a pen tester, uh, we kind of have this mindset of, okay, let's let's go for the shell and let's try to get operating system commands execution. Let's try to, uh, I don't know, to crack hashes. 
but the mindset that this is something that we see in the training the mindset that you have to take when you are pen testing an ERP system is slightly different think about it the owner the owner of the SAP system might not be the IT uh, yeah. the IT department they might be the finance slash business department so when you are presenting the results of your pen test uh, it's very likely that someone from the business will be there and it's very likely that he or she will have the last word on it. And that person needs to understand what is going on on the SAP system. So if you go there and you say, oh, yeah, I found out that I was able to execute operating system commands and we did it through our, our shell, so we were right passing the firewall, X, Y, C, that person will look at you and will not, most likely will not understand a word of what you're trying to say. But and this is coming back to your question. Once you have that reverse shell, you try to get SQL queries execution of abusing of the trust relationship that the application service will always have with the SAP database. And you will go, for example, to retrieve HR information, the bank accounts, credit cards, and you show that to the business, automatically it will be a click on that person's head. And that person will say, oh, okay, so yeah, this guy or this girl were able to go pretty deep inside my SAP system. I do have a problem and I need to find the resources to fix that problem. 100%. And it is easier for, you know, once, yes, you have a reverse shell, you know, um, you don't just stop. You try to uh, properly laterally move through RFC instances that are, uh, can be communicated to uh, through different areas um, as you said, the S trust as well. Um, so there are ways that you can properly move from one system to the other, depending on, of course, what kind of um, reverse shell you get. And think of it from a, a, a also security perspective, uh, what uh, permissions you have on that system that you can actually still exploit and further um, enhance your, let's say, uh, persistence on specific systems and continue on the entire network. All right. Um, do we have any thanks, Jordan, for the value? Thank you, Gaurav. I hope that I'm answering. Um, any more questions? I hope that this was clear to everyone, or we'll just wait for like a minute or two, and then we can thank everyone for joining. And hopefully, we can see you next month in our tackling uh, SAP security together. Um, and again, uh, Jordan, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you know, um, it's been fun during this session and also fun uh, to, to, to have a look at the course that you are providing at No Monkey Academy and what you are doing with uh, Whisker, which is quite interesting. No, thank you guys. And thank you for the invitation and the opportunity of being here. Absolutely. All right, I think we can we can um, we can cut it down. So um, thanks, session Joseph. Uh, thank you, Martin. Shout out. Um, thank you, guys. All right, thank you, guys. Hope you have a good day and see you later. See you later, Jordan. Speak to you later. Thank you, guys. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.